What's up, Fi, everyone? Welcome to the latest installment of Recon Jack. I'm your host, U.S. Marine veteran and historian Chuck Lynch. On today's episode, I'll discuss the origin of the Eagle Globe and Anchor, commonly referred to as the EGA, the official emblem of the United States Marine Corps. I will also cover the first general officer and seventh commandant of the Marine Corps, General Jacob Zeeland, who approved of the EGA's design. The current Eagle Globe and Anchor emblem traces its roots in designs and ornaments of the early Continental Marine. The present emblem, adopted in 1955, differs from the emblem of 1868 only by change in the Eagle. In 1776, the device consisted of a fouled anchor and tangled in its rope of silver or pewter. Changes were made again in 1798, 1821, in 1824. In 1834, it was ordered that a brass eagle be worn on the cover. That means a hat to you landlubbers out there. The eagle measures three and a half inches from wingtip to wingtip. An eagle clutching a fouled anchor with 13 six-pointed stars above was used on uniform buttons started in 1804. This same insignia is used today on the buttons of marine dress and service uniforms with the six-pointed star design replaced with pointed stars. Three years prior to the then most recent design, Jacob Zeeland was commissioned in the United States Marine Corps as a second lieutenant on 1 October 1831. Zeeland would soon begin his numerous duties at sea following his preliminary training as a Marine officer in Washington, D.C. During the Mexican-American War, Zeeland commanded the Marine Detachment embarked on the frigate USS Congress. He took part in the conquest of California from 1846 to 1847 and was brevetted to the rank of Major for gallantry during his actions in the San Gabriel River crossing on 9 January 1847. Later, he also took part in the capture of Los Angeles and in the Battle of Las Mesa. Apparently, once the Marines captured LA, they had no intention for it to fall into the hands of the enemy again. After the close of the war with Mexico, Zeeland proceeded to Norfolk, Virginia, where he served for a time, then to New York, where he remained until June 1852. He was selected to accompany Commodore Matthew C. Perry. Oh, wait, 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 not that guy. This guy as a fleet marine officer in the famous expedition to Japan, serving with the Marine Detachment on board USS Mississippi, on which he cruised in Japan with the expedition. He was the second person to set foot on shore at the formal landing of the naval forces in Japan in 14 July 1853. During the early years of the Marine Corps leading up to the current design of the AGA, distinguishing marks were authorized which included black cockades, scarlet plumes, and yellow bands and tussles. In 1858, the first version of the present color scheme for the officer's dress uniform insignia appeared on an elaborate device of solid white metal and yellow metal. The design included a United States shield, half wreath, a bugle, and the letter M. On 21 July 1861, recently promoted Major Zeeland commanded a company of U.S. Marines during the First Battle of Bull Run, where he was receiving a minor wound. In 1863, Zeeland was given command of the Battalion of U.S. Marines sent to support the naval force whose mission was to capture Charleston, South Carolina. However, due to an illness, he returned after a few weeks of his duty to garrison at Marine Barracks, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. On 10 June 1864, he was appointed Commandant of the Marine Corps in the rank of Colonel. His faithful and efficient performance of the duties of Commandant during the trying period of the last year of the American Civil War and those years immediately following the war is evidenced by the fact that he was promoted to the rank of Brigadier General on 2 March 1867. Upon his promotion, he became the Marine Corps' first General Officer. After the war, Brigadier General Zeeland successfully defended the Marine Corps against its critics. And in 1861, Marine Commandant Brigadier General Jacob Zeeland appointed a board to decide and report upon the various devices of cat ornaments of the Marine Corps. On 13 November 1868, the board recommended the modern insignia and was approved by the Commandant four days later and by the Secretary of Navy on 19 November 1868. The emblem recommended by the board consisted of 
a globe showing the continents of the Western Hemisphere intersected behind a fouled anchor and surmounted by a spread eagle. On the emblem itself, there is a ribbon clasped in the eagle's beak bearing the Latin motto Semper Fidelis, meaning always faithful, which is a Marine Corps motto. The current uniform insignia omit the ribbon. A little interesting fact about my own family name of Lynch is that we share the same motto. I even told my grandfather, who was a retired U.S. Navy petty officer, that Semper Fidelis apparently runs even thicker in my blood. Besides, I dare you to deny just how handsome I looked in my dress blue uniform. The globe on the U.S. Marine emblem signifies the Corps' readiness to service in any part of the world. The eagle represents the United States as it was selected in 1782 as our national bird for its long life and great strength. The anchor, which dates back to the founding of the Corps in 1775, acknowledges the naval tradition of the United States Marines and their continual service to the Department of the Navy. There are some differences between the uniform insignia for enlisted Marines and that of officers. The enlisted Marines dress blue uniform insignia is a die struck from a single sheet of brass and anodized a gold color. The service emblem insignia is coated a flat black color for both officers and enlisted. The officer's insignia is assembled from four parts, a die struck silver colored globe with eagle and a gold colored anchor with silver colored fouling type and gold colored continent. Now one of my first platoon leaders had actually told me that his wife preferred the dress blue uniform of the enlisted men over the officers. My then platoon commander was actually a prior enlisted Mustang Marine officer who actually enjoyed the appearance of the enlisted EGA over the officers because it actually does not omit the island of Cuba, which he had actually served on during his service in the Marines as an enlisted man. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Recon Jack, and perhaps you learned something new. I may have only again scratched the surface of this topic and intend to cover more of the changes to the EGA in a future episode. Please stay tuned for new episodes as I continue to explore the hallowed history, traditions, and individuals of the Marine Corps. And also, please feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave some feedback down in the comments section. I certainly look forward to hearing back from you. And until next time, Semper Fi and carry on.